Uh, we talked about this. Not in, um, Newcastle 2, Manchester City 3. Like Great comeback guy. kings, I think. Anybody, uh, like the rest of the league up there at the top are looking at it thinking, oh man, this is City doing what they do, isn't it? Now they're going to go on a run, back up to second in the table. If you're, if you're Villa or Arsenal behind them, as soon as you're chasing, it's not yeah, nice. Yeah. As soon as you're chasing, it's just not nice. And again, like no, no KDB, no Erling Haaland, who you'd say on paper are probably their two best players. Maybe Rodri might argue the case that he's up there at that level. Um. Oh, yeah. What do you do now? I was going to ask you a question. Do you think missing Edison now, though, could potentially be a problem? Well, we think he might because, be right. Oh, okay. It wasn't yeah. too bad then, because the two goals that Newcastle scored were good finishes. Don't get me wrong, but I didn't know whether you think Ortega should have, could have done better, Harsh. getting across a little bit. Harsh. Would Ed- Edison have let him Ed- in? Edison would be a miss. Ortega is 3.8, by the way, as I no tweeted thanks. at the time. No, thanks. But if Edison was out long term, you've got to consider it, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. I would not consider any City defensive player at the moment. But if you've got, if you've got 3.8 goalkeeper for the best yeah, yeah, team yeah, in the league, it. 100%. and you've got doubles and good fixtures coming 100%. up, you'd have, to, you'd have to consider it. But Edison messaged himself after the game and said, um, no drama, won't be out for long. So certainly not a long term, I don't think, at this stage, unless... Time it shows up in a scan. Um, I'll, I'll credit uh, our Arsenal correspondent Adam Pritchard. I think in terms of catching City, he summed it up well when he tweeted, "I much preferred the blissful ignorance of forgetting City had KDB and actually thinking Arsenal could win the league." Yes, and that's what you mean. Once you're behind, you go, "Oh, jeez, ain't catching them." And it's not like St James's Park has been a bit of a fortress for a little while now, and to be able to come back and just knock on the door so relentlessly towards the end and then get over the line as well. And they deserve to win as well, by the way. The game, the game was a brilliant game of football. Yeah. And it, and it ended with the right conclusion because City think, deserved to win. Um, but that's game state a little bit as well, right? Where because Newcastle have gone 2-1 up, they, they're they going to invite... City are going to then be banging on the door yeah, relentlessly yeah, I get that. again. I get and that. if City had been 2-1 up, they might have completely taken the foot off the gas and then you'd be like, okay, well... They didn't really... The City missed do. chances, particularly Alvarez missed some mm. sitters, really. So, yep. And it's not to say Newcastle defended badly. I think whoever you are playing against City, you're always liable to give up some opportunities. Next you're gonna, year you're gonna, three for City. All right. That's, that's big, right? Mm. To go to St. James's and put, post that, mm. yeah, it's good. Look at You're looking there at the, um, the dominance of the game. Yeah, yeah it's, there's a little green mountain for, for Newcastle there at just before half-time, but that's yeah. it. The, the game sparked into life pretty much off the, the Bernardo Silva goal. Because obviously the Edison injury, which was a d- disallowed Newcastle goal, and unfortunately the linesman does have to keep his flag down. That's what he's told. Um, obviously led to the injury. And then straight from that, City passed back to Edison and Newcastle nearly scored again because he was in trouble. And that's why they took him off. Because he was struggling, right? You, can, you could almost carry a passenger and give him three, four minutes to maybe get over the problem. With a goalkeeper, what are you, you going to do? You can't. Especially the way City you play. Yeah, yeah. So they decided to take him off, which I think was the right decision. Um, and then from there, the game had a little bit of a lull. In fact, it felt like a good 15 minutes before City kind of got territory in Newcastle's final third. They scored this brilliant goal um, from Bernardo Silva. Wonderful flick. And then... Yeah. I reckon, because you, you, you obviously mentioned about the Oscar Bob, Bob goal. I think Bernardo's finish was better than Bob's. In terms of its execution, which one would it be easier for me or you to perform? Bob's. Probably, yeah. I think if Bernardo tries reckon, that 10 times, he the, might get it twice. I reckon the first touch gets away from us, though. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but I think if Bernardo tried that 10 times, he might get it once or twice. Whereas if Bob tries that 10 times, he'll get it three or four times. Like, there's more chance of him being able to repeat it than Bernardo being able to repeat that flick. Uh, I don't know. I think there'd be probably a split views on that, actually, in terms yeah. of the execution. But for me, Just because I mean, Bernardo opinion, is one right? touch and Oscar Bob is three touches. Yeah, it's, a, it's an opinion, but I... I I like to. See, I, I thought his finish was great. I love those yeah, kind of little flicks. Brilliant goal. Yeah. And then Newcastle scored these two stunning counter-attacking goals, both brilliantly finished by Isak and Gordon. Anthony Gordon, respectively. Um, Carl Walker, particularly on the Gordon goal, absolutely bizarre. If you watch it back, Ruben Diaz is like, "Come on, go out to him," and Diaz gets back into position way more than Walker. So Diaz is out running Walker. Right, well that should never be happening, should it? No. And eventually he decides to go out there and he lets him come inside and shoot. It was really 
strange and bizarre. I got a point I'd like to make on Carl Walker in a bit as well, though. Um, and City had good chances in the second half. And like I said, look, King Kev's come on. Big game Kev, as we always like to call him. And has obviously settled the game with a brilliant goal himself, which is very well worked by Rodri to manipulate the situation for him. But it's then all his own work to finish it. And he's obviously played this... I'm going to say ridiculous pass. It's not. It's a brilliant kind of cross pass from that kind of half space position that he loves. And Bob's finish, I, I think it blew me because it was his first Premier League goal. That's why I was right. like, oh, wow. Mm. So you've got that composure to do that in the 91st minute. And plus, Pep had brought him on rather than Grealish, right? Yeah. So it's shown like a real bit of little faith in him. So that's an extra attacking body that I think City can now consider as part of their ranks going forward. He will now, to the Manchester City fans, feel like a real part of that squad. And he may have beforehand, in fairness. But the fact that he's notched an important moment, it's like, okay, he's a part of this now. And that's another option that, that they can use. And he's, he's obviously a very good talent. He's only about 18 or 19. He's or, a teenager. Yeah. Teenager, kid. So a really good talent that they've got coming through. It's players like him is part where maybe they let someone like Cole Palmer go, right? Mm. Um, I went to talk about Walker. And we're talking about Vardio. You got Sofa score up, Suj. I'd like you to do something from the game, actually. Have a look at City's average positions from the game. Uh, so that would be... Line-ups, average positions right at the top. Here we Have go. Have a look at the City's ones. That's Newcastle's, mate. Have a look at City's. Oh. Press the City badge, you Yeah, 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 yeah. It's one of the nicest ones you'll look at all season. Just looks smooth, doesn't it? Yeah. It's basically a, a two, two, five, five, two, two one. one. Yeah. Basically. So we, when you're lining City up in this, you're probably looking at more of a four-three-three slash four-two-three-one, depending on um, your, your your persuasion how you prefer it, basically. But what we're getting now is with no John Stones, and I think obviously importantly no Manuel Kanji available at the weekend. Is this is happening more and more with Gavardi and Walker? their positioning. So we've seen quite often City move, move into a, a back three in possession where you'd have like John Stones moving from centre-back into midfield or a Kanji's done it or in the past they've used a full-back go back to Yuzinchenko days and stuff like that they've used a full-back to do that sort of thing so at the moment that's not happening they're finding extra men by moving in within the front players so you've got Bernardo Silva is basically moving from kind of a right-wing right-sided midfield free position to go and play where he wants Kovacic sitting with, with Rodri. Rodri can go between the centre-backs, get the ball. And the two full-backs going, going on further and higher. Foden is floating in this kind of right 10 half space where some points he looks like he's right winger. Other points he looks like a, a number 10. They can swap positions with Alvarez where he wants to drop short as well. And they're finding the extra man in offensive phases. This is a change from what we've been seeing for a lot of the last couple of years. And it might just be at the moment down to missing personnel. But I mention it because now we've got this City double. Not everyone's going to be in a blessed position where they might be able to go a fully fit De Bruyne, Haaland and Foden if they're all available. Some will be looking at defensive players. And I think Carl Walker and Josco Vardiol for that should now really need monitoring, actually. Vardiol gets himself in some really interesting positions. Yeah, it's Walker's cross, right, for the Walker first goal. Walker only feels like he's going to be six-point Carl Walker. And he was still he just, in this game. He, he, but he's got he, the assist yeah, rather than the clean yeah, sheet. yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, particularly Gvardiol might be worth watching now. Now, they can always change that where Akanji comes back, Aki plays as the left back, and then Aki sits in and they move Akanji in from centre-back to midfield. So, I mean, what people will want in a City defensive asset if they want one for the double is, is he going to play twice? Well, God knows. But I think particularly Gvardiol might be worth keeping an eye on at the moment. Three best City, is it, is it that, Suj, now? Foden, well, Haaland and De Bruyne, if Haaland's back. Foden, Hall and De Bruyne, probably. Like, I, I, I feel uh, disrespectful disregarding Alvarez, but I don't know if he'll start getting rotated out a little bit more now. He's been main I'm, man. I'm so going to have a look for advanced tier patrons later this week on talking tactics at the impact on specifically those two players of De Bruyne and those minutes towards the end of the game. I think the direct impact for Alvarez at the moment now will be Haaland's fitness. So the irony is that I think a lot of people will have set up their bus teams. Have you, Serge? Nope. Maybe you should do that. Yeah. Uh, set up their bus teams with Alvarez captain, and yet they might end up selling him. Yeah. If the big man up front is looking like he's going to be back. So, 
yeah, even with even just for City at the moment, it's probably worth waiting before diving in. And I know Kevin De Bruyne is going to get absolutely steamed into. His value is going to go up irrespective because of what he's done. But I think the information you can get from that Tottenham game might be quite important for Wham's next. Like if De Bruyne was to start against Tottenham and play even an hour, I'd think, okay, yeah, we, we probably need to go and do that. If he's only a sub against Tottenham, not convinced. Would it, to throw him in against Burnley? If they draw with Tottenham in the cup, then they'll probably play Burnley Wednesday, Brentford Saturday, Tottenham Tuesday. Like under that circumstance, De Bruyne's not playing all them. And it might be that De Bruyne plays the league games and doesn't play the cup games, right? It could be that. D but I just G think slow w. down a bit. G double, D double game double week. Double game uh, week. It just makes it so much more tempting to go with, uh, with him. Yeah, though, but... It's a double game week. The other thing is, like... What you've got to do is work out a plan, right? So it's all willing, oh, I can afford De Bruyne. And a lot of people will be able to go even say like yourself, Salah to De Bruyne. Is that what you'd have to do? Yeah. Okay. So you go Salah to De Bruyne. I wouldn't have to. It's what I would do. It's what you would do. Yeah. Fine. You need to work out your path back to Mo, right? Mm -hmm. Mo might be back for game week 23. Now it's Arsenal away if that's the circumstance and Egypt's bomb at AFCON. So there's probably not a, oh, I've got to get it done straight away. But it's straight after Arsenal then it's Burnley at home and then it might be Liverpool double as well. So you know that's getting steamed into as well. So it won't be a lot of time to waste. So you need to, if you go to Bruyne, you've just got to be conscious of your, your other players, right? How are you getting to Holland if you don't have? How are you getting a salary if you don't have? Do you want Trent? Is he a sacrifice? Like, and you don't have to have all these players. Absolutely not at all. But let's put it this way. There will be some free hits in game with 25 and De Bruyne, Holland. Alexander Arnold and Salah will be in all of them. Yep. And I suspect the fifth player from a third city player would be Foden. And then I guess people would punt sort of Jota or Nunes or something, something like that. Like that yeah. Agreed. 